Greetings everyone. As fuel prices are once again on the rise, you might find yourself wondering if purchasing premium name brand fuel is really worth that extra expense, or you might even find yourself questioning why some people continue to spend extra money on premium fuel when regular gasoline is quite a bit cheaper. In this video, I'm hoping to answer some of the questions you might have about gasoline quality. We all know there are a lot of choices out there when it comes to gasoline. You've got discount stations, you've got those other stations that say that their brand of fuel has superior cleaning agents and produces superior performance. And at each of those stations, you've usually got at least three grades of fuel to choose from. So which gasoline is not only the best for your car, but the best for your wallet. Well, let's start by discussing additives. One might think that a discount station, such as the ones outside your local big box store or grocery chain, has to sell subpar fuel to keep prices competitive. But the truth is the Environmental Protection Agency actually regulates and even enforces what they call the lowest additive concentration in gasoline. And I'll put some links in the description if you're interested in reading some more about how they regulate and enforce those fuel quality standards. But to sum things up, all gasoline these days is required to have a minimum concentration of detergents in order to minimize carbon and other deposits in the engine, as these can ultimately cause the engines to run less efficiently and in turn produce more harmful emissions. And sure, it's nice that the EPA sets a minimum requirement for detergent concentration, but there is actually a higher standard known as top tier gasoline. According to top tier, this is a fuel performance standard written by auto manufacturers to assist in keeping the engine even cleaner thus resulting in an improved customer experience. The top tier logo serves as an indication of a station where the fuel maker is supportive and honors the vehicle manufacturer's request for higher fuel standards. By the way, if you wanna know more about top tier standards, I'll put a link down in the description and they've even got a convenient tool to help you locate top tier stations in your area. Now let's talk about octane ratings. The octane rating of gasoline simply refers to its resistance to auto ignition or pre-ignition. Some even call it detonation. It doesn't mean that the fuel is any more powerful just because it has a higher octane rating. In a four-stroke engine, the compression stroke happens right before we ignite the fuel using the spark plug. And as the piston compresses the air-fuel mixture, that generates heat. In some cases, with enough compression and a low enough octane rating, that heat can prematurely ignite the mixture well before the spark plug is supposed to, and while the piston is still on its journey upward. When this happens, you'll typically hear a knock or a ping. I describe it as more of a rattling metallic kind of sound, at least that's how my ears hear it. Pre-ignition is not a good thing, and enough of it will lead to some serious engine damage over time. And the best way to prevent pre-ignition, beside keeping carbon deposits at a low enough level using top tier gasoline for an example, is to make sure that you're using fuel that has a high enough octane rating for your engine. The best source of information regarding your engine's octane requirements is actually just your owner's manual. For example, the owner's manual for my 2012 Ram with the Hemi, of course, states, and I quote, this engine is designed to meet all emissions regulations and provide satisfactory fuel economy and performance when using high quality unleaded gasoline having an octane rating of 87 to 89. The manufacturer recommends the use of 89 octane for optimum performance. The use of premium gasoline is not recommended as it will not provide any benefit over regular gasoline in these engines. The manual continues to go into more detail, but that sums up everything I need to know. 87 octane will work, 89 octane is ideal, but premium is just a waste of money. And a study from AAA agrees. They tested vehicles of the same make and model using premium and regular gasoline measuring things like horsepower, fuel economy, and emissions. And to quote the results of that study, there were no significant differences in any of the tests, indicating that using premium gasoline when it wasn't required or recommended offers no improvement in engine power, engine efficiency, or engine cleanliness. The key phrase here though is when it isn't required or recommended because using the owner's manual for my Trans Am, which utilizes an engine with a higher compression ratio than average as an example, Gasoline with an octane rating of 91 or higher is recommended for the engine to run its best. And since fuel in my area is either 87, 89, or 93 octane, I use 93 octane in this car since I'd rather be on the safe side of what is recommended. Of course, keep in mind, aftermarket modifications such as power adders like turbos, superchargers, or 
Even something as simple as a handheld tuner can increase the octane requirements of an engine. But generally speaking, it's just fine to use the minimum recommendation of the manufacturer when filling up an unmodified vehicle. So if you were to ask me if premium fuel is worth it, I wouldn't really worry much about the name brand on the pump. Instead, just get whatever gas is cheapest or most convenient on your route as long as it's still top tier gasoline. And since top tier states that fuel marketers are required to use top tier quality standards for all octane grades of gasoline at their station, if your car only needs regular or even mid-grade, you can get those same detergent benefits without paying extra for a higher octane rating than your vehicle actually needs. If you found this video helpful or informative, please hit the like button. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. Also, there are some links in the description to resources that I used when compiling the information for this video. So if you want to check those out in more detail, you know where to find them. And of course, for more automotive related content, subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.